Hello all, this is the Code Warriors event coach training um, for the event coaches to prepare to create young Code Warriors. Uh, here's what we'll be going over in this session. Um, so first, a brief introduction to the event itself, then a closer look at the event format and rules. Um, we have a few rule changes from last year. Uh, then a slide that has useful places to get started. If you're somebody who doesn't have a lot of experience with Python or coding in general, or if you're somebody who's at a more moderate level or advanced level even, and would like to know where to focus your students. Then a few general tips for taking the test and that you can advise your students on, and um, then uh, where we can refer you for any questions that you might have. So first of all, um, my name is Adam. Uh, I haven't included my last name here. It's not exactly a secret, but um, we don't want people contacting me directly and therefore gaining an unfair advantage. Um, any contacts should happen through the, uh, the form on the website itself. I'm the event supervisor for Code Warriors. This is my third year with Science Olympiad volunteering for this event. Um, I am a programming and game design teacher in the Lance Cruz district for my day job. And um, I also started the AP Computer Science program uh, in the Lance Cruz district. I, I've taught AP Computer Science and other classes for Michigan Virtual for 10 years now. So I have some additional programming and teaching and, and uh, proctoring experience there. Uh, I also have a, a few side hats that I wear and, and some literal ones. Um, I'm, I'm an actor. Uh, I've done some shows out at the Riverbank in Marine City. I referee basketball. I play cards. Um, and uh, no, whatever whatever grabs me at a given moment, I, I have a number of side hustles, as many teachers do. So that's that's me. <laughs> So this event um, involves teams of one to two students. Two is optimal. You want students to be able to um, divide up the work between them. And we'll talk more about that in the general tips. Um, they are allowed one pre-written page of notes. Uh, that can be any format that you would like, as long as it is confined to a, a single notebook page front and back. It can be handwritten, printed, whatever they think might help them, because they're not allowed to use uh, phones or external search engines during the uh, event itself. Um, it's it's basically a test taking format, although we have uh, some additional activities now as well. Um, the, it is in person, it lasts exactly 30 minutes. I will be the one proctoring it. Um, we have three sections to the test. There is the multiple choice section. Uh, we have 20 of those. There is a hands-on programming question where they will get involved in the Python compiler online uh, to answer a question. We'll talk more about that in a bit. Um, and then uh, a new feature for this year is the interactive program, which is a day of activity, which is sort of a, a gamified version of testing some of their knowledge of programming. And um, it's something that they will not have seen before in its exact form. Um, so all of the questions in every section of this test uh, have this concept of low floor and high ceiling involved that come from my teacher education days. Um, the idea here is that every group should be able to at least find some questions that they are confident in if they've looked at any of the material before. Um, we have sort of easy, medium, and more challenging questions. Um, however, we don't expect any groups to get a perfect score. Uh, part of that is the time limit that we have here. It's designed in such a way that there is more content than that most groups could probably at this level complete um, perfectly. And uh, we also want it to be the case that there won't be any ties as much as we can avoid that. So we have questions that will continue to challenge groups up to the level that they're at is our expectation here. Um, and you can get an entire list of all the topics covered on this uh, test and in this event in the official rules document on the website. Adam, I have a question for you. Yes. Uh, will students be bringing their own uh, laptops or will you be providing them? Ah, good question. Um, we will be using the computer lab at the location that we are at. So students do not need to bring their own laptops. They will all be using the same uh, compiler online, and they will all be using uh, access to the same interactive program for that portion of it. Good question. Forgot about that. <laughs> Did I miss anything else? 
Nope, I'm just listening to you and realized that that was a question I've heard someone else ask before. Right. Um, the other thing I forgot to mention here, I believe the rule sheet says that students can bring a calculator. That is permitted. Um, they will not require it. Uh, they, there's no math on the uh, test itself that would require students to do anything beyond what they should be able to handle um, in their head or by hand or certainly with the use of the compiler. So uh, a calculator is allowed, but um, the, the page of notes is all that's really recommended. Okay, um, new things for this year. So the interactive program, the third section of the test is completely new. I've been working with one of my AP computer science students to develop this in uh, the development engine Unity. And um, the idea here is that it's a, an interactive experience for students to answer questions about Python in a more hands-on way and in a more abstract way. Um, that's only 20% of the overall score this year. Uh, this is a day of activity. What we mean by that is they will need to sort of think on their feet in order to be able to complete it. That said, um, we're currently developing a stripped down version of this test that will be available to students during the practice events, the live practice events that we're holding. And um, we are in discussions to possibly get those made public after the practice events, but that's not a certainty yet. The idea here is that um, students will have to improvise in order to complete this portion of the test, but there won't be anything outside the scope of the normal content. Um, so uh, that one should be a pretty interesting addition this year and I'm looking forward to, to seeing it in action. Um, the other change to this year is that, and this is in part to make room for that interactive program and in part as a response to sort of how teams were doing on the hands-on programming questions in particular last year. Um, there were two last year, this year there's only one. It is a multi-part question and it does still follow that low floor, high ceiling principle. Um, and I and, uh, believe we have some sample questions on the website itself. But uh, the question that they'll be answering here will not be available on the website. This is another case where they will have to be adept enough at responding to a prompt that they can succeed on this portion of the test. Um, the hands-on programming question the, is 40% of their overall score uh, during the event. So they'll want to be careful to prepare for that one just as they prepare for the multiple choice portion. All right, as far as resources, these are all available as links on the website itself. But if you wanna take a, a screen grab here, um, let me just quickly take you through these. Um, some of the particularly interesting ones that I like to point um, instructors and, and uh, event coaches to. Uh, we've got uh, Code Combat. That's a fun one for students to get started if they haven't seen much code before. It has introductory concepts and does it in that gamified way. And as I'm a game design teacher, that's something that's always interesting to me. If you're looking for something that's a little bit more academic and has maybe more free range um, interactivity, the W3 Schools site takes a very formatted um, classroom style approach where um, they've got all the reference materials that you need and they also can meet students at their level and it's nicely organized for um, finding whichever portion of the content that you're looking for. So those are the two that I would definitely take a look at. Um, Online-python.com, they're the, the second to last one on our list, is the compiler that we will be using during the event. So if students have some familiarity with that um, and are comfortable compiling and writing programs in that uh, setting, then that will certainly provide them an advantage during the test itself. So I would recommend uh, looking at that one specifically for preparation. All right, general tips for uh, this test taking slash uh, event success here. Um, teach problem solving strategies more than code syntax. It's important that that uh, students have the experience with going through the code and being able to recognize what the syntax of a particular line of code is and how to write their own simple programs. Um, but it's more important that they build a strategy. The lateral thinking piece of it is something that I try to teach in my classroom. 
And it's something that I think that you should coach them toward here. And the best way to do that is just to write programs, to go to those very early introductory programs and say, hey, what if I wanted to make a calendar program? What if I wanted to make a program that tells whether a number is even or odd? What if I wanted to make a program that tells whether a user input word is more than six letters? Things like that. And without giving them too much structure in that, seeing how they're doing at um, uh, building a problem solving strategy for that uh, is going to be more important than the, the code itself, I would say. Um, time management is, is going to be a big theme this year and a big feature. Uh, they only have 30 minutes. As I said, they probably won't finish everything with the kind of time that they would like. So you have to consider division of labor for your students. You have to consider, um, will they come in knowing that at the halfway point, we need to switch which section we're on, or we need to confer and we need to be able to think on the fly. What I'd recommend is going through some of the practice materials and giving them unlimited time on that, and then talking to them about where they could possibly cut time down and, and what it looks like in real time. And the more you can build up to that point, I think the better off your teams will be on this event. Um, answer the easier questions first. The points are points on the test. Uh, the multiple choice are 40%. We have easy, medium, and hard questions. It isn't always immediately obvious which questions are the easy ones, but if students have some experience looking at some of these types of questions, then they should know right off the bat if the question is something like which of these statements will print this correctly, that shouldn't take them too long to do. And you want to get those out of the way. There's no penalty for guessing on these tests. So there's no advantage to leaving anything blank. Um, the Let students take ownership of the learning process. Obviously, when it comes to the event itself, they're going to be in there without you, their coach. So they need to have some experience working together without leaning on you too much, at least as it gets closer to the event. So, so that's my advisement for um, success on the Code Warriors event. All right, as far as questions go, uh, this is a video, so uh, I'm afraid live questions will be wasted on it. I apologize for my lack of uh, time bending technology. However, what we did last year was we did this Python workshop video. The link, again, is on the site. Um, right here, it looks like a hyperlink that you cannot easily click, but it is found there on our site. This was essentially a one year of programming instruction condensed to one hour, and I ran that one. And there is uh, access to the code on that. So if you are a complete beginner to Python or to coding, I would very much recommend that you go through that video with your students. Um, we have frequently asked questions on our website. So if you take a look at that, if there's anything that you feel that you are missing, then um, feel free to send a question in through the form. I've opened that up to content questions this year that I'll be happy to answer for you if you just can't find an answer online. If something that I said in the video is not making sense and you weren't able to attend that live section to, and nobody asked that question, then, then please send it along and we will be happy to help you out as well as we are able. I'll ask uh, John now, is there anything that I missed that we definitely need to cover here before we wrap it up? Uh, there was one uh, question that I recall someone asking mm -hmm. about, and I, you might have already covered this, so I apologize if you did. Sorry. They were asking about the structure of some of those online resources and were, whether any of them specifically were more structured, you know, so to try to you know help the progress. Like depending I, on what students are looking for, depending on what type of students you have. If you have students who have very organized thinking and are very academically oriented, then the W3 schools is probably where I would point you. If you have students who are excited about the events and, and want to come in and have as good a time as possible while still showing, then I would I would definitely send them to Code Combat and say, all right, this is this is the gamified version of learning coding. And ultimately you end up at the same place, but different students have different learning styles. So that's that'd be my recommendation. And then take a look through some of the rest. We've got we've got wikis on here. We've got um, direct instruction videos from Code Academy. Um, although I think you need a, uh, a sign up for that one, but I think they have a free trial. 
Um, you've got the compiler where they can mess around as well as an alternate. There's, there's lots of resources here that would, would keep you busy for a long time um, and, and certainly get you through the sort of introductory level Python that we're covering here. I know that some school districts have resources that they themselves have signed up for. And mm -hmm. so that's another um, option that I think uh, some teams may have. If, if, they, if they're not familiar with what um, elementary level programming resources their district has provided, they should ask that question, maybe. Right. Uh, and no, I and think it may be unique by district. And, and asking anybody who has knowledge of either your topic or the events or anything of that sort that will perhaps give you some insight that we didn't think to mention here uh, is going to be beneficial. Don't don't try to do this in a vacuum. Don't isolate yourself for the sake of, uh, um, I don't know, shyness or, or anything of that sort. Uh, help your, your, ultimately, this is about the enrichment of these young people. So the more that you can do to support that, I say the better off you are. That's, we all have that same goal in mind, I think. <laughs> Yeah. All right. If Great there, job, it, Adam. Thank you. If there's nothing else, um, that is the end of our uh, event coach training for 2023 Code Warriors. Uh, again, please send any questions along through the form on the website if anything comes up. Thank you very much.